Squail, I Quinnasi Lamnama, and the Pak Saltanat, Tanit Sanat Stanemo. Good afternoon, everybody. My traditional name is Quisaltanat. Uh, my English name is Michelle, and I'm going to teach you how to make a drum today. Uh, so, we're just going to make a little drum. Looks a lot like this, uh, but the style of drum you can do in any size. So a really important part about drum making is to make sure that you start off by getting yourself into a really good state of mind. Uh, and in Coast Salish culture, we call that Ait Shkwalawin. So Ait Shkwalawin means strong heart and strong mind. And so when we're making drums, all of the positivity, all of that good energy, um, we want to put all of our positivity and all of our good energy into that drum. So if you find yourself at any point getting frustrated or getting stressed at all, take a little break, go to the corner, have a little dance party, go for a short walk and get yourself back into that good state of mind so that your drum has a beautiful sound and has beautiful energy. Here I have all of the supplies that you will need to make your drum. Uh, this is an elk hide drum and I already have all the holes popped into it. I have a drum rim, I have a handle to put on it, I have pre-measured out center line and artificial sinew and some lines to tie it on. The first step is to figure out which side is the beautiful side. Which side of the drum do you want to have facing out and which side do you want to have facing in? So some drums that's really easy, some hides that's really easy. Uh, this drum is a little bit tougher. It's beautiful on both sides and so what I need to do is go really up close and look and see which side the hair follicles are on. And so I figured that out and I want that, this is the beautiful side. So I want that to be on the table. I want that to be down. So the beautiful side is down and the ugly side is up. Next, I'm gonna take my rim and I'm gonna figure out which side goes down onto the table. And so the side that goes down is generally flat so there's one side of the rim often that's flat and one side of the rim that has a little bit of a curve and so we want the flat side to be face down next we're going to make sure that our drum rim is centered on our elk hide so we want it to be about we want the elk hide to go about the same distance up on each part of the rim so go around and make sure it's right in the middle and then you're gonna place your inner line. So today I'm using artificial sinew and you can see that it has a knot that I've placed at the bottom and it's facing me. So that's gonna be in the south. So you want that big ugly knot um, to be facing you. So next I'm gonna tie on, tie the middle line on and I tie them on. I have four of these lines that are all the same length and um, I'm going to tie them on in the north, the east, the south, and the west, just to hold this on temporarily. In the end, we're going to cut those off. They're just to temporarily hold the middle line in the middle. So I try to make my knots uniform on each, with each tie, so that the ties are in the same place. That just helps me to hold that in the same spot, kind of in the middle. So if you can practice making this knot beforehand, that'll make this process just a little bit easier. So you put the two together, you twist them, and you put it right through that loop. So last one, and like I said, these will end up getting cut off in the end. So I like to use a different color than the line I'm going to sew this middle line on with. So it's a different color so that when we cut it off, we know we're cutting the right line. So then recenter, make sure your hide is still centered. 
Go in all directions, push it up just to make sure it's the same on every. So for this next step, I'm going to tie on, I've got my artificial sinew. It's a braided one and it's a little bit thinner and it's what's gonna tie on the hide to this middle line. So one side of the line, I already have a loop tied on there. And so I'm gonna go right next to that ugly bump and I'm gonna put the loop just under and then I'm gonna put the other end of our sinew and I'm gonna put pull it through that loop and I'm gonna pull, 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 and then it's gonna be attached to that line. It's gonna be right to the left of that ugly bump. So the next step is I'm going to put a, a wool needle onto that sinew and so I just put it about two feet and just let it hang down. I don't tie it on, I just put it on and I leave it to hang down. Then I'm gonna go to my south and I'm gonna find the first group of two holes and I'm gonna go from the table side and I'm gonna try to make this easy. So I'm gonna go through the table side and then I'm gonna go right through. So I'm gonna scoop right through to the, to the hole right to the right of it. And then I'm gonna pull, 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 And I'm gonna push this up and I'm gonna leave it kind of even, but loose. So it's nice and loose because as I go around, I don't want this to get pulled tight to this side or my central line will be loose. So then I'm gonna go inside my loop and I'm gonna keep this line to my left. So I'll go inside. And then I'm gonna go to my next group of two, always on the table side. So table side, go through one hole, and out the other and pull, pull, pull. Leave it nice and loose. Go through the next one. And I'm gonna do the same process all the way around. Just remember that you're always working from the table side. And going through, in through one and out through the one right next to it. Okay, so now I've gone and I've sewn all the way around and I'm just going to double check that I'm still centered. If you're off centered at all, you can move the rim just a little bit in the direction and then double check that you're centered again. With the end here, I just kind of drop it off the side. So I'm just gonna let it hang down off of the side of the table while I start to tighten up the sewing here. So this first time I'm going to just take out a little bit of the slack. Yours might have more, it might have less. And so I'm gonna go around I push up on the hide, I pull in on this, and I try to make it so that I've given the same amount around, all the way around, if that makes sense. So this first round, there's no heaving on it. You're just taking out some of the extra slack and continuing to try to center that ring. At this stage, it's all about centering that line. And there's a little bit of an art to it. It takes a little bit of practice. So I'm gonna go all the way around. And of course, I started at the start place where I started sewing this on, I started at where that ugly bump is. Everything starts in the south when you're making drums. So this next step, I'm going to pull it just a little bit tighter and I'm also gonna cut off the strings that held this middle line on. I call them the four directions because they've done their job, they've held it in the right place and now I can get them out of my way. So I'm gonna be really careful not to nick any of the other lines as I cut them off because it's no fun to have to restart your drum if you nicked the wrong line. So those are pulled off 
and I'm going to continue to tighten. And so I'm gonna start at the ugly bump. I'm gonna start at the beginning where I started to sew it on and I'm gonna pull this in just a little bit and I'm gonna pull the center line in and I'm gonna push the elk hide higher on the drum. So I take out just a little bit of slack, a little bit more and get that line just a little bit closer to the drum rim. So I just go all the way around, tightening it up just a little bit, making sure as I go that I feel as I'm pulling that elk hide or that um, sinew on the elk hide because you don't want to pull it so hard that you rip the elk hide. Otherwise you need to restart your drum, cut the part off and put a new hole in. So I'm not heaving on it. I'm carefully pulling up, carefully pulling in on this. I'm carefully pulling up on the hide, but it is starting to get a little bit harder. It is starting to hurt my hands just a little bit. And that's kind of how I know that I'm putting enough effort into it. Okay, so while the camera's off, I went around one more time and I tightened it so that all the slack is out. And one of the ways that I test to see that all the slack is out is I push on it. And so if I feel any slack, I go, okay, I need to go back and tighten it one more time. If you find that it's not as uniform, if it's not quite centered, you can tighten it on the side that it's looser. So you don't have to go all the way around at this point. If for instance, your line was up here, you might start over here where it starts to get bigger and tighten it up just a little bit more on the side where it's farther away from the edge. Right now I'm gonna show you how to tie on. So the final step of finishing this um, middle line. So what I like to do is I take my needle and I put it through the middle and I pull. And so what I like to do is make one final V. And so what I do is I put this to on the left side of that of that ugly bump and I just pull over and that turns this single line into a V and then I'm going to go again through the middle and I've created a bit of a loop because I've gone through I've gone around and then through and that creates a half knot so that half knot is going to secure my line so I'm going to do one, two, three, four of them on the left side of that ugly bump. And then I'm gonna do four of those. I'm gonna go over to this side and I'm gonna do four of those knots on this side. Because with drum making, and in Coast Salish culture, we often do things in fours. So that's three, that's four. And technically at this stage, your drum is structurally sound. If you didn't have time to put the handle on right now, you could just leave it. You could put it up on its side to dry and it would be fine. You could come back later and put your handle on. So this next part is not necessary, but I like to do this. I call it the beautification stage. And it, I find that it just beautifies up the back and makes it look like the drum is a little trickier to make than it actually is. And so I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I'm gonna go around my first set of V's. So I wrap around it and I'm gonna wrap it. I'm gonna wrap around it one, two, three, four times. And then I'm gonna go over to the next one. And I'm gonna go two, three, and four. This stage is not necessary. It is just for beautification. If you want to beautify your drum, you can. 
If you don't, you definitely don't have to. I just find that the end result is a stunning drum. Well, it is either way. Um, so if you like this style, go ahead. Otherwise, at this stage, you could just be putting your handle on. So there's four. And I'm gonna continue just going all the way around. So this is the final stage of finishing your drum. We're gonna put a red cedar wooden handle onto your drum. So we're just gonna use the leftover piece from making your drum, or if your piece isn't long enough, you can add another piece on, just using the same technique, creating a loop on one side of it, and then tying it onto the line, if you don't already have a long enough piece. So the trick is, is to just make sure that you've spaced it out as much as possible. So you're gonna start by putting it through one of the holes, so the top hole, and you're gonna center it. Then you're going to take your artificial sinew, and I like to go right through the edge right there. So the first one, I just go one over, and I always go in the same direction. That makes, that makes tightening it easier. So I always go from the top down if I'm lacing it from this side, and then I go from the top down when I'm attaching it to the drum frame. So after, I'm gonna skip over to the next one. So, so from the top down, And one of the tricks is to not tie this on completely until after you've laced the other side. And then you can make sure that it's nice and centered. Yeah. So sometimes when you add the handle on, it falls perfectly into place. Other times you need to completely adjust it. And so, like I said, I've done the one side. It looks pretty centered. I might need to tighten it up just a little bit, but I'm gonna leave it untied until I've done the same thing on the next side. When you are sufficiently happy with how centered your handle is, you can tie off each side just onto the main line. So you can see that I have tied it off right here and right here. And so for those tie offs, I've just done eight half loops that turn into a little knot and they're quite pretty. So your handle should be nice and tight. So when you kind of try to move it, it shouldn't have any give. That way when you're holding it, it's nice and solid. Um, the last thing is you can trim off the edges or you can continue to do little knots all the way around with them until, until your sinew is completed. And lastly, you need to put your drum up on an angle to let it dry. So I like to put it up on a side like that, put it away from any heat sources and away from any uh, cold sources like a window. You don't want to put it on a window because of the sunshine or the condensation. And you're going to let that drum dry for about 24 hours. You're going to try not to hit it at all, even though it's quite tempting. You're going to let it dry without stretching it out anymore. Um, and within 24 hours, your drum should have a beautiful sound. Remember that it will be affected by temperatures. Uh, drums are meant to be nice and warm and so you're going to need to warm it up if it's cold outside to have it make a beautiful sound um, or if it's warm outside it, may, it might make a higher pitch sound than it regular regularly does mm -hmm.